the lithium dendrite problem has not been 100% solved. You know, there's a handful of companies that have promising technology, but I have yet to see where... Talking graphite here today with Volt Carbon and V-Bond here in Canada, and we're looking at PAC-specific energy and looking at Joby, we've already talked quite a lot about the PAC energy density, so V-Bond, talk us through, um, what are we looking at here? Well, uh, the battery that you're holding on to is a graphite anode battery and that cell specific energy is 260 watt hour per kilogram. That's typical of what we see today in today's technology. And when you convert the 260 watt hour per kilogram to pack specific energy, that's including all the components that go inside a, a large pack, we're left with about 160, 170 watt hour per kilogram here. And in this chart here, it shows that, you know, Tesla Model S, where it stands, Taycan Turbo, where it stands, and some of the eVTOL aircraft that are gonna be launched in the next few years. And you can see from here that the larger eVTOL aircraft are going to require, obviously, more cell-specific energy. The industry is headed towards a lighter battery, and here we have a lithium metal battery, which has a cell-specific energy of 400 watt hour per kilogram. Now at 400 watt hour per kilogram, in the pack specific configuration, we are at about 275. And what am I looking here? This is a graphite, graphite anode. anode. Yes. So what uh, pack specific energy level do we have on this one? That'll be about 160, 170. Okay, and if I put this in my car, how far will I be able to drive with this single pack? Well, for just one of them, you'll have the radio on for about an hour or so. Okay. But if you have a big pack, an automotive pack, uh, 75 kilowatt pack, you will probably get some good mileage out of it. Okay, and looking at this, what I find amazing, I mean, we've got Archer here, we've got Lilium, we've got Joby. How come that uh, we're looking at such a different range here from all the way down to 150 uh, kilowatt per, uh, watt per kilogram to 350 for Lilium? How come there's such a big range here? Well, this is estimate based on likely the size of the aircraft, the aerodynamics. Uh, a lot of these are vertical takeoff, so you need the energy density at first to lift versus a, a fixed wing aircraft where the wings provide more, more lift as you've got some forward speed. And will we see also then more specific battery technology coming for electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles or are they always going to rely on what's happening in the EV space? Well, I, I think we're going to start to see more uh, lifting metal out there. Uh, we have competitors that are actually in lifting metal and working on EV tall aircraft. Uh, so that's one way of getting the, the energy density up. There's a few other chemistries and you, you know, you've heard of silicone mm -hmm. that enables you to improve the energy density. You know, there's trade-offs too as well of silicone. You've mixed the anode with the silicone, but there's an expansion of the pack and that has to be managed as a design. And for those uh, not familiar with lithium metal, maybe a one minute elevator pitch. What is that technology and how does it compare to normal LFP batteries, for example? On a lithium metal pack, the anode is just a lithium metal anode collector. And so the lithium ions inside a battery uh, will plate back onto the lithium, as opposed to in a graphite battery, it intercalates into the graphite. And so the graphite technology has been around for a while. Uh, it's been more perfected and the industry today is headed more into the lithium metal for light weighting. Okay, so is that going to have an impact then on, on graphite demand or what's your take going forward well, for the next uh, years ahead? From what I see, graphite is always going to be around. You know, for fast charging, change the graphite configuration for fast charging. The lithium dendrite problem has not been 100% solved. You know, there's a handful of companies that have promising technology, but I have yet to see where a technology is is absolutely the best in terms of solving the the dendrite problem. So it's going to take some time. You know, our, our estimate is it's going to be another four or five years before the lithium metal battery technology becomes more viable. But, uh, that's good news for anyone invested in um, EcoGraph or in EPR, EPR resources. Graphite is still here to stay, and we're probably going to see a lot of different battery technologies in different markets four different use cases going forward, I guess, V1. Yeah, there's there's the home storage market where, you know, we're testing some lithium iron phosphate here. Uh, we're actually testing some lithium iron phosphate 
with just a lithium metal. Um, we have a partner that's provided us with some lithium manganese iron phosphate. And we're also testing that in our, in our lab here as well. So those technologies are suited for home storage and other applications where, you know, it's not flight critical. Uh, you're on the ground, you don't need the light waiting to be in the air. Okay, super, fantastic. Um, we're gonna talk more graphite here and then we're gonna visit the plant. So guys, stay tuned. We've got some uh, very cool clips coming up, thanks.